Hello, I hope you're well today. Yesterday I was chatting to a lovely young person called Kim who has recently stopped drinking and she was telling me how much of a struggle she was finding it. She's saying that she's been about a month sober now and she's really struggling because all of her friends are inviting her out um, for meals, to go out for drinks, to go clubbing, to go to pubs at weekends and after work and even some members of her family are inviting her out for pub meals and things and she's really having to work hard to avoid all of those situations and this is a really common experience. Lots of us when we first stop drinking find that we're having to work really really hard. We're kind of hiding away from those situations that we know we're going to find too challenging or too tempting and in fact what we can also find is that some of our friendships fall by the wayside as we realize that the people we were hanging around with um, really the only thing that was holding us together was that connection over alcohol it was the drinking the getting drunk the commiserating over mutual hangovers that's what was holding the friendship together and so a lot of people find that some of their friendship groups, some of their social groups um, kind of drop off and fall by the wayside as they move into a new sober lifestyle. And that can be quite hard work when you're going through it as well. And it can sometimes feel like this is impossible, like this is just too much hard work. Like how are you going to get through every weekend, every party invitation, every social engagement not drinking? How are you going to hide and avoid all of these situations forevermore? And because this can feel like such hard work and so impossible, it's often at this point that some people find themselves caving in and giving up. And so my video today is all about giving you hope. I just want to let you know that this feeling, this tough stretch doesn't last forever. It does take practice at first. When you've been used to living a life that revolves around alcohol and you're learning how to live it sober, you're effectively learning a new skill and learning a new skill takes practice, it takes determination, it takes focus and it takes effort. But whereas in the early days of living your life sober, it can often feel as if, and Kim was sharing this with me yesterday, it can often feel as if around every corner there's a pub, every, every um, morning or afternoon or every day on a daily basis, there's a fresh invitation to do something that involves alcohol. And it can sometimes feel like you're literally having to bury yourself away and hide from the world in order to get through this. This ends you do get more confident as time goes by. And I can remember myself in my first few months of, of being sober, of living my life sober, I can remember hiding away from pub invitations. I stopped going to gigs. Um, there were certain things that I didn't go to. There were certain friends that fell by the wayside because I knew that they were unhealthy for me and I knew it was going to be too much of a challenge for me to cope if I was around them. And so it really is about a whole lifestyle change. But the great thing is about this lifestyle change is the more confident you become with it, the more practiced you get, the easier it becomes. And I remember the first time I went to a pub, it must have been about two months in to me living my life sober. It was about two months in and I remember my boyfriend and I deciding we were going to go to the local pub. And I remember the planning and the preparation. It took me mentally so that I was ready to go to the local pub. I think we went for an evening meal. And what I did was I had to prepare for that event mentally. I had to steal myself. I had to kind of work myself up to it. I had to mentally rehearse what I was going to do when I got to the bar instead of ordering a drink. So I had it all planned that I was going to order my peppermint tea. I was going to um, stand by the bar and just smile and nod at people. I was then going to go and sit down at a table with my boyfriend and we were going to catch up over an evening meal. And I had to work myself up in advance 
and practice mentally, just, just literally use my imagination to rehearse doing all of these things. So I knew it would come more easily to me when I actually got to the bar. And of course, all of this took work and it took some energy and concentration, but I did it. I went to the bar, I ordered my peppermint tea. I had my plan B in case they weren't serving peppermint tea. Um, if they weren't serving peppermint tea, I was gonna order a tonic water. Um, with ice and lemon but they were serving peppermint tea so that was fine went down sat and had this meal with my boyfriend and what I did was I really focused on this was an opportunity for my boyfriend and I to catch up with our week because we hadn't seen much of each other during the week and so basically the way that I did it mentally was I kind of thought about it as in terms of well, instead of sitting down at home on the sofa and catching up together and spending the evening in together, we were doing exactly the same thing, but we were sitting in a different room on different chairs and we were having our meal served to us. And it was about the catching up. It was about the socialising. It was about the conversation. So I'd managed to mentally prepare for this first evening meal at the pub since I'd stopped drinking. And it went absolutely fine. And in fact, it went more than fine. In fact, I came away from that first evening at the pub feeling fantastic, feeling like I'd achieved something and feeling even more confident that I could do this, that I knew I could do this because I had actually enjoyed it. And what I'd recognised when I came away from that first evening at the pub was that I'd actually spent more time and energy on connecting with my partner and on enjoying the conversation and on valuing that connection and really appreciating appreciating every moment of it, appreciating the fact that my food was being brought to me, that it was being cooked for me, that I didn't have to worry about doing the dishes and that I could drive us home and that I could wake up in the morning with a fresh head. All of these lovely things that I got to appreciate about that first visit to the pub sober. Now fast forward to three years down the line and this week I found myself in a pub. I was out and about in one of the local villages here and I was giving out flyers, I was chatting to people, I was getting to um, know my way around and I was doing some networking and I found myself in a pub and I was chatting to the, um, the woman behind the bar and I decided that I wanted to use the facilities. I wanted to go to the loo. I wanted to um, have a chat with her some more, sort of pick her brains about the local area and the best places for me to get my face known and to go and network. And I was chatting away to her and I decided, right, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to have a drink. So I ordered a, a tonic water. Um, and I had a couple of conversations with a couple of the guys that were sat in the bar having their pints and having their lunch. And the reason that I'm sharing this experience with you is that these days, when I'm in a bar or a pub, I don't give a second thought to alcohol. I don't have to do any of that mental preparation that I had to do that first visit to a bar when I'd first stopped drinking. None of that, because you just get more and more practiced and you get more and more confident so that eventually it just becomes automatic and you don't bat an eyelid when you're going into bars, you're going into pubs, you're going into clubs, you're going to gigs, you're going to parties, you're going to um, family or, or friend um, social gatherings or meals. You just don't bat an eyelid at any of it because it becomes a no-brainer, it becomes a such an automated process in your unconscious mind that you're simply going to go and not drink. And your confidence as the weeks go by, as the months go by, and as the years go by, your confidence levels just get higher and higher and higher. And so this week when I found myself in the bar, I just really enjoyed it. I sat there, I soaked up the atmosphere. I even enjoyed the smells because although that might seem odd because the smells were of kind of that, that stale alcohol, that kind of typical bar type smell. There was something about the ambience. There was something about the atmosphere. There was something about my conversation with the, the bar woman and the guys sat around. There was something very relaxing and homely and cozy about it that I found myself really enjoying it. And it did kind of take me back 
to the old days where I used to go into bars and I used to drink. But it took me back in a healthy, fresh kind of way that allowed me to really appreciate and value what I was experiencing. And at no point did my mind flip to, oh, this would be better if I had a drink or I'd enjoy this more if I had a drink. That simply doesn't happen. So the point I'm making is that if you're in the very early days of stopping drinking and living your life sober, you can expect it to be hard work initially. You can expect it to feel like a bit of a struggle with all of these pressures around you from peers, from friends, from family, to take you to environments where there's going to be lots and lots of alcohol. And it might be that you need to protect yourself from those situations by hiding away from them, by avoiding them and doing what you know is healthy and safe and right for you. But there will come a point where you feel confident enough to take on the challenge of going to the bar with a couple of friends or a trusted family member and practicing your new sober living skills, practicing order, ordering a non-alcoholic drink at the bar, practicing putting your energy and focus into enjoying the connection and the conversation instead of thinking about drinking. And the more that you practice doing this, the more experience you get under your belt, the more confident you become. And then you find yourself in this amazing position where you can go into all of these social situations. You can go into bars and pubs, clubs, whatever. You can dance the night away and you can do all of it without giving alcohol a second thought. I hope this has helped you to feel a bit more motivated, a bit inspired and a bit more confident that you can actually do this. It does get easier. For more sober tips, inspiration and motivation and to hear some more of my sober stories, you can subscribe to my channel. I'll look forward to catching up with you very soon, but in the meantime, let's go get sober together.